right. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Dr. All right. Um, <clears throat> last week, we started looking at this problem that is um, projected. I did say that you should come this week with a solution. So I'm just going to ask you to use the next couple of minutes, well, 15 minutes to be exact. And um, uh, okay, then. Yeah. I want you to use the next couple of minutes just to upload it to the link in, in a school of for me. Just upload whatever you have. It doesn't matter um, where you have reached. But um, just upload for me. All right? So I will stand by and wait for the next 15. Okay. Yes, let me scan and send it right now. Okay. Hi, good afternoon, sir. I just joined. I didn't really hear the instructions. Hearing me, Miss Donna? No, sir. Can you repeat? Upload the solution here for the question on the screen. Okay, then. Okay, sir. Sir, good day. Yes. Uh, I was just I was just testing my mic because I was having problems with my Zoom um earlier today. So I was just testing my mic. Okay. Sir, um just for clarification purpose, sir. I am seeing two power power system power management uh, under school logic, sir. Which one of the link we should put it under? We don't mind me asking. And that was just posted. When was just posted? October 27th. Okay, thank you. to bring it with you, yes, make sure you yes, have it sir. available today. My book, sir, because I normally work and do work at, at school, at my work, sir. Actually, I have my book at the work. All right, well, there's nothing we can do about that right now, all right? All right, sir. <clears throat>
All right, so um, I've seen 39 um, submissions, so I think we can proceed. Okay, so <clears throat> should I just go down the, down the line? Mr. Allen, get us started, no? Adams, rather, Adams, Adams, Adams. So, Adams? Yes, sir. Come on, get us started, no? Here we go about the, approaching this. Yes, sir, with the, the given information, sir, um, we can find the the, the cost per hour, sir, or the, the, the power, the MW cost per hour, sir, for each, um, for lambda one to one three, sir. MW cost per hour, I don't know what that, I don't understand what that means. You mean the cost per megawatt hour? Yes, sir. So you want to find, oops, oops, oops. You want to find. First you have to differentiate the, the expressions that we got, sir. Okay. Cost per megawatt hour. All right. So for lambda one, just, just give me what you have. Lambda one. So I have two times 0. 0.0. No, just give me the final. Just give me the final oh, expression. 17.4. Lambda one? 17.4. Um, 17.4, uh-huh. Lambda two, 19. No, 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 no. I don't want value. I'm saying that I want the final expression. Oh, I was just saying it a while ago, sir. Oh, you were telling me two times something. So I'm saying just give me the, the expression, having multiplied it. Maybe 0 0.1. Okay, so 0 0.14 times 60 MW. Times P. Right, plus yes, sir. Times P. Plus 9. Uh -huh. Lambda 2. So 0 0.11 times P2. Plus 6. Lambda 3. 0 0.09. Times P3 plus 8. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Ms. Allen? Ms. Allen? Ms. Allen? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Next. What, what next would have? Find the value of lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. At what point? At the minimum M MW. Megawatt, sir. At minimums, lambda one is equal to seventeen point four dollars per megawatt hour. Mm -hmm. Lambda two oh. is nineteen point two dollars per megawatt hour. Mm -hmm. Lambda three is sixteen point one dollars per megawatt hour. All right, so now that I have these lambdas, next step. You're going to find the most efficient cost, which is unit two. I go from there. Sir, you have two lambda two right here, sir. A pretty cost. So, where do I go from there, Mr. Allen? The lowest value is the most efficient. Okay. Which is the value of our unit three. Uh -huh. And so what do I do with that? So in order, in order to, um, the second step is to test the, sec the second most efficient cost, which is 17 by four. Okay, so I make, so how do I test that? Test it with um, lambda three values, which is 17.4 equal to A3. Okay, which is, so 17.4, give me the expression, no? Equal? 
a3 b3 plus b3 no, let's give me the expression let's give me what i must have ready give me the number give me what i must write the number no sorry 0 0.09 uh -huh. six no yeah 90 oh, three. three plus eight plus eight all right and p3 from this is equal to 90. Are you 90? Yes, sir. All right, so that's 90 megawatts. All right. So what, so what's the implication of that? It's to find out if. Oh my, you have found 90. So what, what, what does this 90 tell you? 90 is the minimum for. The minimum power that the unit three offers. Let's let's look back at the question. Um, yeah, but that ninety is what we use to calculate this, isn't that so? Yes, sir. We are running a test to see if the um the second most efficient uh -huh. will surpass its maximum. Well, it's not about its maximum. Well, all right, go on. So what is P3 equal to from this expression? 104. 104.4. Allen. I'm speaking to Chavez Allen. 104.44. 104.44 megawatt. Yes, sir. All right. All right, cool. Um, so what does this tell you now? This this P uh, three did not pass its maximum power. This means that the all that all power will be taken power will be taken from all three units. All right. So is it a matter of it not passing its maximum? Is that really what you're testing? It's efficiency. We are we are testing its efficiency. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Miss Barrett. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Ms. Barrett, what are you really testing? Sir, my background is a bit noisy, sir. Yeah, man, may I have a shout? Do you have a shout? Can you hear me now that I'm, I'm shouting? I'm hearing you. Huh? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm asking, you know, what were you, what is he really testing? So you're breaking up. What is he really testing by putting in this, by using that expression? What is it that is really being tested? So the highest efficiency, sir. Oh, how do you know it's the highest efficiency? Sir, I don't hear you a while ago, sir. How do you know whether or not it's the highest efficiency? What is it that would have told you that it's the highest efficiency since you are saying it is the efficiency that we are testing? What answer would be saying to you? Yeah, man, it's the highest efficiency. So, um, I'm changing to the minimum, um, faster, M minimum MW. Right, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, Mr. Blake? Okay. All right, all right, that's not what I'm looking for, Ms. Barr. I'm going to move on. Mr. Blake, Roger? Yes, sir. Uh, so what exactly are we testing? Why is it that we went ahead and did that? Sir, the initial test, no, since we know that... Um, the, the, the highest um, maximum, not highest operating efficiency one is um, is, is unit three. Mm -hmm. So um, the initial test carried out on unit one is next to the most efficient unit. So equal to the um, the seventeen point four. Um, so by testing it, what are we really looking for? The one that is second to the most efficient. 
Yeah, man, I understand that. And I, you said that before, and I, I agreed with you. So I'm now asking, by making the test, what exactly are we testing for? Why is it that we are testing it? Um, to, how, to, to how much um, the, the units um, consume in terms of the cost, cost, the cost these are incremental reasons. cost, the incremental cost, fuel cost. Okay. Ah. All right. Not, not exactly. What we are doing, ladies and gentlemen, in making this test, you are seeing the point at which an, at another unit, in this case, unit one, will be required to also produce output. That's what you are really doing. Because you have already established that this is the most efficient. I think everybody correctly said that. Agreed? When you look at the next um, unit in terms of efficiency, you are now testing to see what additional output would have come from unit three before unit one would be required to also produce additional output. So it, it, it would all depend Yes, because, uh, for example, Mr. Allen was saying, because it didn't reach its maximum. That's not, that's not the critical thing. Because it all depends on the total that you are supplying to the network. So if the amount that you are supplying to the network to meet the, 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 the total demand is such that all the additional power could have been supplied by Unit 3 without having to go to Unit 1 or 2, then you would do that. Yes. Do I make myself clear? Clear, sir. Because in this particular problem, you know that the total is 800. Yeah? And I suppose by virtue of what you have already done um, in terms of the exercise, you know that you know unit three had reached its maximum. And so you know that's where the maximum uh, discussion is coming in. However, however. Based on what I have here, um, we have just added what? An additional 14 megawatts onto unit three. Um, let, us, let us add these up. That's 180, that's 270, All right? I could have given you a question and said, what is the share when supplying 280 megawatts? All right? Now, in supplying 280 megawatts, when you do this test, when you do this test, you would have seen that unit three would put out 104 before unit one starts um, to provide output. Yes? And so what that would say to us is that the mix is that P1 would be 60, P2, 120, um, 120, yeah, and P3 would be 100 in order to meet um, 280. I hope this is clear, you know, right? You're not testing about maximum. You're looking at whether or not you would be able to meet the total demand by virtue of the additional um, output you would get from unit three in this case, in this example, yes? Is that clear? Have I confused anybody? Yes, sir. Yes, I sir. Have... Two, two, quite. Yes, yes, sir. Pardon me? So I don't quite get what, um, what was being said. All right. I'm trying to explain the reason we conduct we conduct this particular test. And I'm going back to what Mr. Allen said. Mr. Allen said it was to test whether or not unit three would have reached its maximum. And I am correcting him by saying, you are not testing to see whether or not unit three reaches its maximum. You are testing to see 
at what point in terms of output of unit three, unit one would also need to come into the picture. Based on what we have done here, it means that unit three would have only added 14.44 megawatts to its minimum output before unit one would also be required to be putting, at putting out additional. Sir, excuse me. Um, last week you said that the test also show um, how much power unit three would, would produce before it become as if inefficient as unit one. Is this the same thing it's I said? That's the same thing I said. Okay, sir. So, because unit three had a minimum of 90, yes, that's the minimum. It reaches 104.44, uh, 104 and when it gets to that point, it is now as inefficient as unit one. So it means that both unit three and unit one will now be putting out um, additional um, power to the system. That's why, I, that's why I just said, if I had asked you to determine the breakdown when supplying a plant demand of 280 megawatts, then the breakdown would have been... Um, Unit one would maintain its minimum of 60. Unit two would maintain its minimum of 120. But unit three would have increased its output by 10 megawatts to get 100. You add up these, you get 280. This question that I have given you, ask you about meeting a demand of 800 megawatts. So obviously, having done this test, yes, having done that test, you would recognize that the units, unit two and unit one, would have to be in the mix in order to meet the 800 megawatts. All right, now, uh, where was I on the list? Uh, Mr. Bruce. Bruce? Mr. Bruce? Uh, not a good sign, Mr. Bruce. Sir Burns? Yes, sir. Uh, know that we, we, we recognize that um, the additional units, the other units, will have to be supplying power. What's the next step? We would have to find AT and BT in order okay. to find. And AT is equal to? One over. Zero point one four. Okay. Right. Plus one over zero point one one plus one over Go ahead. Zero point zero one zero point zero nine inverted. And that gives you zero point zero three six five six nine nine. Thank you, Mr. Burns. All right, and BT. Be equal to AT times nine over zero point one four plus six over zero point one one plus eight over zero point zero nine. 
and that gives you? 7.596. Okay. All right. Um, okay, Amber. Yes, sir. All right, so give me the, um, the equation for lambda. All right, so that would be the 0 0.0365699 mm -hmm. multiply um, by the 800 megawatts that would be supplied by the system plus the um, new BT which is be 7.596. What does that give you? All right, so all right. my values are slightly different because I, I did some rounding, um, but my final answer for the new lambda is Some rounding for what? For um, when I'm solving for, for lambda. I rounded up the alpha t and the beta t to 0 0.0366 and 0 0.7.60. You use 0 0.0366. Yes. All right. So you know I'm going to deduct marks for that because I think I have warned everybody enough that they should try and use as many decimal places as possible for 80. I'm almost sure I did that. So even if you write down something different, I expect you to use the calculator value. So I, I'm not going to take your difference. So, Mr. Copley, thank you, Mr. Mr. Campbell. Mr. Yes, sir. Lambda. What value you get for lambda? Uh, my lambda was. I, I am assuming you didn't round off, also. No, sir. Wow. My lambda was thirty-six point eight four two two. Thirty-six point eight four. Remember, it's dollars and cents. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Um. So, based on what, based on that lambda, we are substituting that into the formulas for lambda one, two, and three. Is that the yes, case, Mr. Copley? Yes, sir. All right. So, what did you get for P one? P one is one ninety-eight point eight seven two. Ninety-eight point eight seven two. Uh huh. P two. Two eighty point three eight three six. 80? Yes, sir. Point? 3836. 320.48, 4688. 320.4, go again. 4688. All right, cool. What, Mr. Copley? We don't have a problem, huh? Eh? Yes, sir. Oh, we're going to solve the problem. By the way, what's the problem where? Because P3 maximum output is 300. You read that, sir? Or we're going to solve it. We have identified the problem, so we solve it. We need to allocate to another plant. Another plant. Hmm? I can hear you rigging up. Yeah, what do you mean by another plant? Where is another plant? The additional load that's higher than the 300. Yeah, but what I'm asking, why you say another plant? Is there an issue with you saying that? Well, I have an issue with you saying it. I want you to find the issue and correct it. Uh, another unit, sir. Okay, another unit. That's on a little better. All right, so you are going to assign P3 as 300. Because that's its maximum. 
We are constrained by that. All right, so having done that, what's, what, what, what's the next move? We're going to yeah. sub P3 for 300 megawatts into the formula. Go again? Sub P3 for 300 megawatts into the formula. Which formula? The lambda, sir. Oh, you won't be able to do that. What you know, know is that the total... All right. No, that's not the approach. That's not the approach. So... Let us, let us, I'm, I'm going to go down the, the line. All right. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Kapsu. Next. Okay, sir. Um, hold on, this thing changed. Uh, just a minute. Okay. So, Mr. Crasdale. Yes, sir. Hmm. Now that we have this issue with, with Unit 3, how do we solve it? Uh, sir, would you find a new AT and BT? Can you reach this one, sir? Sir, sir, because the, the, sir, the leftover would be six, um, 500 megawatts, sir. Can you reach leftover yet? You're not telling me nothing about that yet. How we reach left over? I said, what's the question, sir? I'm, I'm, we, we, have, we have just recognized that we have a problem with unit three. So I'm asking, how do we proceed? Uh, sir, you need uh, additional power supplied by the other units. All right, go on, go on. I'm listening, I'm listening. Oh, yes, sir. So, um, for what I did, I used AT, a new AT using the other two units. So, one over 0 0.14 plus one over 0 0.11. What, what I'm trying to get at, I, I want you to be systematic. You know you have a problem with unit three. The problem is that based on the lambda calculated, it is showing that unit three would have exceeded its maximum. Hmm? So we set unit three to its maximum, which is 300. Hence, 500 megawatts, which is equal to PT minus P3, will be supplied. By units one and two. We have to be complete, eh? So now that I know that, yes, we are now dividing 500 megawatts between units two and one and two. So you're telling me about your, your new AT. So AT is equal to? One over 0 0.14 plus one over 0 0.11, and the result of that inverted to, to the minus one. So 0 0.0616. Yeah, one of the round off, first two. So actually, uh -huh. that's what got the calculator, sir. I got 0 0.616000. 0 0.616. Yes, sir. Wow, brilliant. OK. And so BT. 0 0.06. Yes, sir. 0 0.0616, sir. Uh, BT is. Hold on, just a minute. 0 0.0616. 0616. Okay. Point one four point one one. Okay, all right, cool. And BT, let's give it a final value. Seven point three two. All right. So lambda is equal to zero point zero six one six times five hundred. 
that gives us uh, 38.12. Now, I want you to take note of something. Please note that when you contemplated be unit three being a part of the, um, the, 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 the supply, yes? I want you to note the cost was $36.84. So what that is telling you is that because you included that um, efficient unit, the cost was lower than when we are just using the other two, which are less efficient. So you see the cost going up. All right? I just want you to make a note of that. So we now know we have 38. 12. Thank you, Mr. Krasdale. Mr. Daly? Yes, sir. Uh, so from this, what do you get for P1? For uh, P that, sir. What did you get for P1? P1? P1 is e equal to 208 megawatts. And for P2, the value is 290. Exactly 208? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And P2? Is 292 megawatts. 292 exactly. megawatts. All right. So we now have P1, 208, P2, 292, and P3, for unit 3, we have 300. All right. And uh, if we quickly add those, then we get to what, 800 megawatts. Is there anybody who does not understand what has been done? Um, excuse me, sir. Uh, Hello? I'm just thinking about it. Go ahead. Oh, yes, sir. Um, it's not really to say not understand i understand everything that has happened but i was just trying to make a better clarification to say at the initial start why did we um assume that the entire units all units are contributing to the to the load and find that first um um at and bt including all three units at first um, what I'm really asking, if there, was there another way to find out from the beginning that we would have maxed out the the, the three the unit three? Um. <laughs> Technically speaking, that 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 would you would not be able to determine that from any. Um, of the, the data that would be available. It would really be a, an intellectual guess at best. So you'll be guessing that you would have reached the maximum, but there is no way to just look at the information um, that you were given and make that determination. Okay, sir. So the, hence the, the, the necessary tests and checks has to be done to ensure that, because we could have found out that one of the other units were probably could have been max or uh, reaches its maximum before. All right. All right. Let, let me tell you why I would I would strongly suggest that you would not um, go any other route. This question would have been turned on its head if I had asked you asked you to determine um the breakdown for 750 megawatts. Can you see that? It would break down, sir. Saying the question would have had a completely different look if I had asked you for the breakdown in terms of supply from the different units. Um, yes, sir. Meeting a demand of 750 megawatts. Yes, sir, because as you said, the load, the load is it's applied differently. So let's do all right, just for the just to um, 
All right, we still have nine minutes. Just to um, expand a little on, on the question that you have asked. This, this new AT, this first AT and BT that you calculated, just quickly um, put in 750 megawatts and calculate lambda for me. Sir, 35.02344. All right. Substitute that in lambda 3 for me and tell me what value you get for P3. Uh, 300.26. Huh? 300.26. 300.26? Yes, sir. All right. Well, I was, you know, guessing in terms of the 750, but I could have said 740. The point I'm trying to make, however, is that if I had given you a, a slightly less total demand, yes, than the 800, you would have absolutely no way of determining whether or not unit three would have reached its maximum by just looking at the values. That's the real point I'm trying to make. Okay, yes, sir. I'm seeing, I'm seeing that, sir. All right. So th there is not, uh, outside of you guessing and, and possibly getting it right, there's no way for you to determine that other than what we have done here. Okay, sir, I understand. Um, and you know, just for just for your benefit, since you asked, we have we have done questions with four units, and um, in those in those circumstances, we have found where two of the units reached their maximum, which means that we would have applied this particular approach twice in order to determine that the two units have reached their maximum, and therefore. At the end, we, um, you know, just divided the remainder um, among two, two, other, two units at the end. So, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure there are other approaches that persons may have encountered, but I prefer to, to provide you with information so that you err on the side of caution, no? Yes, so I understand. That's my, my, my recommendation. All right. Um, where are we? Okay. All right, so, good. All right, so I'm just taking note of those who have submitted. All right, let's go now. So the question is not finished. What the question I asked for was the, um, the, the plant lambda, right? I believe that was it. So you're asked for the, determine the incremental fuel cost of the plant and the total cost. So what will be the um, plant lambda? Who is next? Um, Ms. Donna? Ms. Donna? Hi, sir. Yes, sir, I'm here. What's the plant lambda? Sir, would you then, would it be lambda one plus lambda two plus lambda three? Why yes or that? Tell me where in, in your notes yes or that. All right, I'm being unkind because I know it's not in your notes. So I want you know to tell me why yes or that. Um. Oh, um, sir, would it, well, sir, could we do it separately for each unit first? What is the theory we just applied? For economic dispatch, what, what's the condition? I'm determining the additional power. Or asking, what's the theory that governs economic dispatch? Because all that we have done you know, is based on economic dispatch. If they are not being 
if the units are not being um, dispatched based on um, ED, yes, then what we have done would be of no consequence. We then have to, um, you know, look at just the generation technology. So we'll be looking at generation uh, dispatch, which will be based on technology, the availability of crew and all of that, which we went through a couple of weeks ago. But here, we are using economic dispatch. So I'm asking, what's the basis for that? Uh, lambda one equals to lambda two equals to lambda three. Well, what? So lambda one equal lambda two equal lambda three equal? Lambda. lambda and that lambda represents what? I'm the plant lambda. Plant lambda. So at the point I'm supplying 800 megawatts, what is the lambda for the plant? Eight hundred. Okay. This is him focused on. Yes, sir. Help her out. What's plant lambda? The plant lambda was um. Uh, 38.12. 38.12. I don't know. You know I, I, you I, had that's one. On this slide previously, yeah. All right. Okay. So that's the plant lambda, which is equal to lambda 1, which is equal to lambda 2. Of course, why wouldn't it be equal to lambda 3? Because lambda 3 is the previous one from before. Oh, give me a better answer. Um, Why wouldn't this be equal to lambda three? Because lambda three was calculated when the load distribution was different. Lambda, yeah. Don't think, don't, don't overthink it. What does lambda represent? Define yeah. it. Um, it's the cost per megawatt for the plant. Cost per megawatt hour. Yeah. So define it. Define it. You have just told me the units, but I want you to define it. It's the amount of money. Um, is the how do I how do I explain this? <laughs> you can use the econ. You know? It's it's the is the cost that the that the plant is the expenses that the plant goes through to generate one megawatt. But additional, that's the key. The incremental cost is the cost for producing one additional unit of output. In this case, the unit of output that we are looking at is a megawatt. So I come back to the question, why couldn't this not be equal to lambda 3? What does lambda 3 represent? It, the incremental cost of the... Of the of, of the, unit three. Uh, of unit three, yeah. Okay, so I'm asking you know, why isn't this or why couldn't this be equal to lambda three? Because the theory says lambda one equal lambda two equal lambda three equal lambda plant. Why isn't this or couldn't this be equal to lambda three? That's a simple question. I don't, know. don't overthink it. Because because um lambda three has been maxed out oh, unit three mm -hmm. unit three sorry unit three has been maxed out and as such the incremental cost um i'm trying to think of the best way to put it the incremental just cost tell me. all right just assume that you're talking to um michael that's a hard assumption but um unit, unit three has been maxed out so the incremental cost will not go up no not its incremental well fine but unit three has reached its maximum and therefore there is no possibility for an additional megawatt to be taken from it yeah all right so therefore its cost of production has been capped because it reached is it has reached its maximum 
There's nothing you can get from it. So there's no cost per additional megawatt from unit three. Are we clear? Yeah, I get that. Which, which is why the, the plant lambda will now be dictated by units one and two, because those are the units which are producing the additional megawatt to the system. So the theory, the definition has to stand, eh? Yeah. Everybody with it? Yes, sir. All right. So lastly, what's the cost? How do we find the cost of production? Um, we substitute it. We substitute the um the lambda value into right. the formulas for we substitute the lambda value into lambda value the lambda one and lambda two the lambda of the plant into the formulas for unit one and unit two. Sure. Um. The 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 P one and P two that we found. At, at this um, lambda lambda value, um, the dollars per megawatt hour, we substitute okay. it in the in the cost functions that we got before in the question. And what were the cost functions? Um, F one is equal to zero point zero. Oh, okay, so we we substitute them into F one, F two, uh, and F three. Excellent. So you put P one into that, P two into that, and P three into that. As these are the functions, those are the cost functions. And so at the end, you would get a cost. And what's the unit? What's the unit? What's the unit for the cost function? This cost function, and what's the unit? Dollars per hour. Dollars per hour. Dollars per hour. Dollars per hour. And one of the beautiful things about the cost being in Dallas, bro, is that you, as an engineer, I hope it brings it home that you recognize that in running these plants, you're actually burning money by the hour. Okay? So efficiency is important. You have to think about what you're doing. You have to think about storage, how much it's costing you for storage, because... The cost functions, as you see it here, yes, there are some fixed costs. And those fixed costs are things that I, I just mentioned in terms of personnel, in terms of um, um, storage, all of these things. So whether or not you're running the plant, whether running the unit, you still have these dollars per hour. What are cool with that now? Yes, sir. All right. Any any, any other questions? Because we want to just go into the rest of this um, generation thing. Sir, I had a question, sir. Um, if, well, I didn't work the question at this point, but I'm not watching, going through a while ago. What if we had, um, at, when we did Lambda 1 and Lambda 2, um, the, um, unit 1 and Unit 2, what if we had reached the um say unit two maximum, which was uh check from the tables. Say about all right, say take unit one for example. Suppose we had reached a 250. We'd actually have to take the same approach which we subtract the both unit um three and unit one from the total power to go about yes. to, to find the additional on unit two. Yes. All right. So if you if 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 one of the other two units had reached its maximum, you take that out, and then it means that the, the last unit would be the one providing the addition. All right, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So most of what we're gonna just move on to the to, to wrap up this whole power system management thing. Um, we wanna talk a little this afternoon about renewable systems integration. Now, much of what um, is expected to be done in this particular topic um, will come out in your project, okay? So you can, you know, for use of a better word, you can use this afternoon's um, lecture as a, as a guide to some of the things you need to be thinking about 
um, when you when you when you look at your project. All right. So let us get started. So we're talking about renewable systems integration, and we want to just appreciate it, appreciate what it's all about. Yes. So it's about incorporating these these systems. And um, in some instances, you'll hear it referred to as distributed generation, dispersed generation, embedded generation. So those are some of the terms you'll hear um, persons refer to um, for generation that is placed inside um, an existing network. Now, for the most part, embedded generation or distributed generation is connected at the distribution level of your power system, all right? So when you hear them talk about dispersed generation or embedded or distributed generation, it's usually at the, um, at, the, at, the sub, at the distribution level. However, however, the large scale renewable systems are now being connected at the transmission level. So in other words, they are they are um, providing input at the same um, voltage levels as the traditional generating plants. Okay, so the the integration that we're talking about is looking at um, energy storage. You know um, how we treat with the the interaction with thermal plants. Yes. Um, and look at how this will impact the, the distribution and transmission system. Yes, Mr. Smith. Good evening, sir. Um, going back to the question. Good afternoon, sir, and everyone. Um, the question that do I just ask, sir, about in the, in the scenario of, um, I think he was referring to Unit 2 or rather. No, unit Mr. Five. Smith, Mr. Smith. My, yes, my apology, sir. but I'm going to ask that you just refer back to the to the to the recording for that. We we have to move on. All right, sir. Thank you. Okay, so this is really what renewable system integration is 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 all about. And so we can look at some of the goals um, that are out there for um, renewable energy or renewable system integration. Um, some of the goals. You know, reducing carbon emissions. That's one of the key goals for use of renewable systems. Um, you know, reducing the, in, in the form of air pollutant. All right. So we are seeking to get rid of or reduce NOx and SOx. Um, NOx being oxides of nitrogen and then SOx, oxides of sulfur. Yeah. Um, which would, and, and you know, a lot of this would have emanated in parts of, of Europe, for example, where acid rain has had devastating impacts on, on a lot of their infrastructure. Um, and so in reducing these air pollutants, you are reducing, uh, you know, the, the, the acid rain and its, its um, deleterious effect on, on the environment, right? And so you want to seek to get cleaner renewable systems as renewable energy systems as part of your mix. One of the, one of the areas of focus that I'm interested in is really and truly how clean is renewable energy because we have to do what is referred to as the energy balance to see in terms of, in terms of um, the aluminum that, that is part of the production, in terms of the silicon that is part of the production, in terms of the, 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 um, the, the fiberglass that's part of the production, how much energy, how much fossil fuel energy would have been used in producing um, these raw materials, you know? So you have to think about the, the, the from the, from the, uh, from the bulldozers that are used to mine the ore because they use fuel and they are producing um, uh, emissions, carbon emissions. 
So when we do an energy balance, then we can see whether or not this beautiful, pristine looking wind turbine, how much is it really removing in terms of pollution from the environment? But that's for another um, day and maybe you know, another or a good research project for someone who has that sort of interest. Anyway, we want to increase asset use through the integration of distributed systems. Yes. Um, you hear it all the while. Oh, we have so much sun in Jamaica and we have so much wind in Jamaica. Why aren't we using more renewables? Um, Jamaica was, you know, I think even the recent heavy rains. For me, uh, yes, they were devastating, but for me, it is just a reminder of what the, the, the Arawak came and saw, you know? The ex Jamaica, you know, spoke to the fact that this was a land of real wood and water. And so these flood rains, they have come as a surprise to us, but the reality is in many instances, uh, we were the ones who have encroached on, on these waterways uh, because we have always been, or we were described as land of food and water, but we mash up the place and it, we, we saw it dry. But during these times, you know, devastating as it is, don't get me wrong, devastating. Um, it, it's just that the waterways that were in existence, you know, as an example, I saw the Rio Minnow in Spate on Sunday. I have not seen water in that riverbed for about five years, you know? Um, and of course, I'm sure someone who has not been familiar with that area may have built close to the bank you know, thinking that they are fine, but, you know. But anyway, I, I digress. We have these assets, we can use them. We have the sunshine, we can use them. And so the question is, why not get them as part of our system? Um, I, I, yes? So I would actually. Yeah, I submit to you, back in the 1990s, um, the idea was that 15%, 10 to 15% um, of renewables as part of our national grid was just too much. Yes. But today we have settled on 30%. And the current um, government is looking at increasing that to 50%. So we have come a far way. Yes. We have the assets. Why not use them? In terms of customers, Customers must be able to integrate at, 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 their, at their level. So, you know, regular householders use up the, the, the RE. And if you have excess, be able to sell it back to the utility company. So, you know, we have been changing. We have been uh, making some, some, um, some, some, some ad advances in, in, this, in this area. So the first goal is to reduce emission. The other one is just to use up the assets that are available, the renewable assets that are available. Um, again, you know, to support our achievement of renewable portfolio standards, yes. Um, in terms of, as an example, and this is a classic example, many of the Eastern Euro European countries, um, they, are, they have a lot of fossil fuel available to them believe it or not. Um, and to become part of the EU, many of these um, countries of the Eastern Bloc were forced to attain certain renewable energy targets in order to join the Bloc. Um, and so you can, you know, do, do some background reading. You see that a number of them joined up in 2004, for example, and 2002. And this was after having gone through years of trying to reach the, the RE targets that were set by the EU. And then we also have to consider, you know, enhancement of reliability, you know, security and resilience from microgrid applications. Why, why, do, we, why do I mention this? Because in terms, of, in terms of just how the power system has developed, 
And I think, I, 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 I don't want to make any pronouncements, but I, I do think that in the Schoology, in Schoology, there's a link I have there um, for, um, oh Lord, it slips me, Maxwell and um, oh my, Tesla, Tesla, the fight between Tesla and um, my mind. Okay. Anyway, where they were looking at at three three phase um, versus single Edison Edison versus Tesla. Yes, Edison versus Tesla, in terms of three phase versus um, single phase connection. I mentioned that because in the olden days, what we had were microsystems. So you had small generating systems supplying um, small locales. And in terms of moving to three phase, three phase provided the opportunity because Edison was looking at just using his DC um, supply, which would only take him to short distances. Um, and once it go, went beyond a certain distance, then, you know, the voltage drop situations and he'd be out, he'd, you know, the systems um, were, were, were rendered useless. But Tesla, with his, with his foresight, now he's looking at, looked at three-phase systems and the fact that you could now transmit um, high voltages over long distances. Um, so what, 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 why I'm mentioning this is because we moved from micro-generating uh, facilities that were sub supplying small locals to where we started to centralize generation. So you know, move to centralized generation. In the case of Jamaica, we now have most of our generation on the southeast coast. So we have generation in the bulk of our generation concentrated in Kingston and St. Catherine. We have now moved to have you know bulk expanded, so you now have more generation on the western end. So we have now centralized our generation. And having centralized them, we were looking at pushing power in one direction, which is going from the generating plant to your customer. Where we are today is that um, individuals, even householders, are generating their own electricity and are now putting it back into the system. So the question is, you know, when we talk about integration, we have to think about security and resilience in terms of microgrid, microgrids and their applications, yes? Um, so th these are some of the, the, the things that you would have to consider in terms of um, when, when we have the discussion about renewable integration. And let me make it abundantly clear, I am not teaching renewable energy here. I'm speaking about it from the standpoint of the power system, all right? There's a course, I think Dr. Chambers delivers it, um, on renewable energy. I don't know how many of you may, may have done it. Anyway, um, also, you know, looking at reducing uh, the amount of oil we use, that is part of the challenge that Jamaica has um, in, terms of, in terms of reduction. Um, <clears throat> I may have mentioned to you before the, the integrated resource plan or the IRP, these are some of the considerations that have been made or have been um, focused on for the IRP in Jamaica up to 2038. So this plan, and I, and I pull this from the IRP just to help you understand in, in terms of our own energy plans for, for, the, for the island, what are some of the things that we're, we're, we're focusing on. So we're looking at things like reliability of the energy supply chain. Um, in terms of, from a renewable energy standpoint, we have, in terms of the, the, the raw material, sunshine, and of course we know that wind is a function of heat, yes? So we have the sunshine, we have the wind, all right? Um, it means therefore that in terms of supply of raw material, if we have more renewable um, in, in our system, then, you know, we are not that um, dependent on what's happening out there. But also, 
because the IRP not only looks at, at renewables, part of the reliability um, chain here speaks to our use of things like LNG. So we are diversifying our, our supply to ensure that we are not overly dependent on any one fuel type. All right, so reliable energy supply chain, uh, diversity of supply, and note together, those represent 50% of the considerations for the for the um, for the IRP. So you are now looking at um, you know increasing renewable energy, right? key component of, of what we have here. And then we come back down now to item six, environmental stewardship. So part of the considerations in terms of planning our energy is about the reduction in um, emissions, right? So that's a key um, focus of, of, of the government of Jamaica. And of course, uh, in the mix is that we want to, renewable you know, energy systems are coming down. We recognize that, you know, that in of itself will help to bring the overall cost of electricity down. And as a, as a part of the overall consideration, you know, this is given um, one sixth of the, the in terms of, um, um as in the IRP. All right. Any any questions so far? Everybody go and sleep early. No, sir. Still here. No, sir. We're still here. Mr. the boat. All right. Cool. Um, so what I want to do is just look at some of the things that would have to be considered when you're looking at a renewable uh when you're looking at the use of renewable energy and integrating that as part of your, your electrical grid. All right. So we have some um, considerations. We have the, what I call the electrical considerations. Yes. So we know, based on what we have been discussing, you know, what we have seen so far, we just did it when we looked at um, economic dispatch. That the power system consists of several generators, and these are you know, operating in parallel. And this creates what we refer to as an infinite bus. All right? So an infinite bus, what, what do we mean by that? Um, an infinite bus is one in which the voltage, and this now in terms of the magnitude and angle, they are the same load angle that we were talking about recently. All right, so V and delta, okay? So V and delta remains unchanged regardless of changes in load or individual generating facilities, generation facilities. What do I mean by this? So at your infinite bus, the frequency would remain constant. Um, the voltage, and usually when we refer to an infinite bus, we usually give it uh, one per unit at angle zero, okay? So that's the idea, right? Um, and what we're saying is that if I add a generator to the infinite bus, because all the other generators that are behind that bus will be operating at the same frequency, um, et cetera, what that means is that the generator that I add to the system must conform to the system conditions. Do we understand that? Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. So if I'm, if I'm connecting a, a unit to the bus, that unit must conform to the conditions. So even if the unit and I'm going to mention briefly this whole business of synchronizing um, a generator. But even if the unit that you're adding isn't fully in sync with the network, because it is being added to um, a, a, an infinite bus, the bus will pull it into synchronism. Meaning, when it joins the, the infinite bus, the frequency of that um, incoming unit will now conform to the frequency of the bus, of the infinite bus, all right? Because of the existence 
of all these generators. Um, and so, you know, I just mentioned it. The other thing we need to consider, so we're looking at the electrical considerations, right? First talk about the infinite bus. The next thing we need to talk about is synchronization. Uh, you, will, you won't be able to supply power from two generators unless they are in sync, unless they are in step with each other. And what we mean by being in, 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 in step, it means that they must be operating at the same voltage, the same frequency, and the same phase rotation or phase sequence. Okay, so you can't have one operating ABC and the other one operating ACD. It, they won't mesh, right? So they must have the same phase rotation. Um, and so the, the, the integration of renewable systems must take into consideration the fact that the, that the, 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 the incoming um, generating facility must be synchronized to the existing network. Otherwise, it will not work. All right? So we, we, we need to also talk about how do we ensure synchronization um, for the various technologies. All right? Um, <clears throat> the, the methods of, of synchronization and... and I know I am sort of dabbling a bit in, in what you would have done in machines, all right? Uh, machines too, uh, but I'll, I'll mention, it, mention it anyway. So the methods of synchronization, um, you have your lamp dark, your lamp bright, and of course you can use your synchroscope, all right? Um, so these methods um, can be used to determine, um, you know, how you synchronize um, your, 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 your generator with an existing system, all right? As I said, these are things that uh, would, would, would be done in, in, in machines, okay? Now, whilst these methods, um, you know, primarily refer to rotating systems. Yeah? Um, there are some renewable systems that, 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 that use rotational energy, yes? Um, so of course, you know, in terms of integration comes from static devices, but these methods for, 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 for synchronization primarily refer to um, rotational uh, generation. Okay, so we have talked about the infinite bus. We have, we have talked about um, the need for synchronization, you know, the, 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 the systems being in sync with the existing network because you are imposing new generation onto the network. So that, that is something that has to be considered. Um, the other consideration for renewable system integration um, is that... <clears throat> you're really not going to be building a system from scratch based on renewable um, energy systems, yes? So you will always be integrating RE systems into an existing network. Now I mentioned earlier that your traditional network would operate from a centralized generating facility and it will be managed through localized switching networks. So in other words, you have breakers um, in, your, in your power system, you know, and breakers are not just used for, um, for, for, for interrupting based on, on faults. You know, you also can use it for switching, all right? So if you want to open a circuit, you open a breaker, right? It doesn't have to be that there's a fault for you to open a breaker. Um, and so, in, in terms of how the network is set up, generally, you are going to have your, your different uh, protection at different points. Um, even, even in the distribution system, even at the distribution level, you still have your fuses. And in some instances at the distribution, you have some um, what we call self-protected transformers, yes? SPTs, which 
which are transformers which carry a breaker on them. All right. So you have your, 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 your protection at the transmission level. You have your protection at the distribution level. However, for whatever reason, whether it be a fault, yes. So whether it be a fault or you know some other activity, whether it could be maintenance, you may need to open um, your circuits. So you may need to even open some um, some fuses and on the and the, the the at the distribution level. The question is, given that you have now put in your renewable systems, or you have your embedded systems, many in, in many instances, they will continue to supply electricity into the network. All right? Or a you know, into that part of the network that they can reach. And this phenomenon, we refer to it as islanding, which is where um, power is injected into a small portion of the network um, with loss to the greater um, uh, part of the network. Are we clear? So there has to be to avoid, um, to avoid harm, which can be to the to the to the the, 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 the workers from the utility company, or it could be damage to people's equipment. Bearing in mind, um, students, that a step down transformer is also a step up transformer. Yes. So although, for example, you may be at home and you are generating um, electricity at, 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 um, at 110, you're getting that one, sorry, not 110, 220. Yes, you're getting that 220 from a pole-mounted transformer, which is taking the voltage from 24 down to your, uh, your, your 220. Yes. But if you then put 220 back on that side of the transformer, you are then putting it back up to 24. So even though yes, you have the disconnection, and that may be, as I said before, maybe deliberate on the part of the utility company for maintenance purposes. If there isn't also automatic um, disconnection on the part of the renewable system, right? If there isn't disconnection and or isolation on the part of the um, embedded generation, which will then quickly isolate it from the grid, you may cause damage, yes, or injury to personnel. So that's another consideration when we are talking about renewables and the integration of renewables, right? Um, and so. Persons who have are giving consideration to generating their own electricity and maybe considering sub selling it to the utility company. These are some of the checks and balances that the utility company will have to make before you are granted the license. So if you want to sell back to the utility, yes, you'll have to get a license from the ministry. And part of that licensing process is that you have to show that you have the ability for quick disconnection should there be loss of power coming from the grid. So you are not there then sending power back into your neighbor's home. Are we clear on that? And the, the, the separation time will be dependent on you know, individual utilities and will also be governed by you know, the various standards, whether it be IEEE, IET, um, or I should say ANSI IEEE. Um, or IET. Any questions so far? Or oh, we saw we saw we finished here. Any questions? Is everything clear? So far, sir. Uh, Mr. Venice, so like us, are you in the room? 
Oh, no, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Now, we want to also consider. Now, we have looked at it from the standpoint of the of the network, the electrical network, and, and the considerations that would have to be made. Now we need to switch and look at the operational features. Yes. Um, and the, the, in terms of how do these, these, um, the, these RE systems operate? We have to consider that in determining how they are integrated, how we put them into the grid. Now, RE systems, are, most of them are not dispatchable. So we can't turn them on and off as the need arises. All right. Um, obviously, I can't turn on a solar plant at, at 6 p.m. All right. You have to take it as you get it. All right. Um, for those who may, may, may be familiar with, 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 with solar, even for your home, yeah. Um, the past couple of weeks, you know, many persons may be crying about the fact that they have the solar system, but they're not getting much from it. But I suppose we have to balance, we have to balance. Um, for about nine months, eight months out of the year, we hardly had any rain and we had brilliant sunshine, you know, so we benefited, benefited a lot from the solar. Now we need to give back, I suppose, with, with all this rain. All right. So we can turn on and off RE systems as the need arises. We can turn off the wind. We can shut down the water for the hydro. Right? But it is better to allow the hydro just to run and we use it as it comes rather than be shutting it on and off, you know, using floodgates or whatever else. And then, you know, when, when, when you know, during a drought, we, have, we don't have it. So the, the, in terms of the technologies, how they operate, we have to make decisions about them. Yes? Um... The, the other difficulty is that we can't tell the time taken to lose all our part of the generation. So let's think of, of, of solar. Um, I have literally stood and watched um, solar generating facilities here in Jamaica move from supplying close to maximum, and we're talking about close to 18 megawatts of, of, of power, and see that just, I'm standing there looking at it and see it drop to about two megawatts in no time. Why? Because you have a beautiful cloud that just comes in the area and covers that solar plant. Now, in other jurisdictions um, where the, the plants, you know, possibly maybe as big as, you know, some parishes here in Jamaica, yeah? That may not be so much of an issue because, you know, the cloud do not cover everything so quickly. But the bottom line is you can move from peak generation to nothing depending on, 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 on uh, the, the type of RE you're using. So in terms of integration, we have to give consideration to that. If I'm using solar, do I want solar? Um, do I, in terms of the size, and where, where do I put it? Do I put them close to each other? Um, do I just put them wherever I have land available? All right. So in terms of how they operate, you know, just the features, the operational features of the RE systems, um, you have to give consideration to that. Um, and so, as I was just saying, these are some of the things that you want to be looking at. And, and I'm not giving an exhaustive list here, but these are the, 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 some of the important ones. Yes. Um, proximity and the capacity of the, of the facilities. Do I want um, a solar farm in, in um, all right, where do I know? Since I know Manchester. Do I want um, a facility at Kendall and then I want one um, in Christiana 
and then I want one to buy content, these places are relatively close. So it means that if one is impacted by cloud cover, the others may very well be impacted um, similarly. So in terms of proximity to each other, I have to think about that. Um, in terms of capacity, where do I put it um, on the grid? Yes. Do I want to put it in a place where uh, there is the, that, that is densely populated? Yeah, so I want to put it near to a place that's densely populated. I, if I do that, I, I'm going to be running some big risks because, again, coming back to solar, if I lose the solar as quickly as it can be lost um, in, in a dense, near to a densely populated area, then it's going to impact those customers. At the same time, if I put a large RE facility, um, you know, extremely far from um, from 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 where the, the, the energy will be consumed, I have to consider the losses. I have to consider the cost of strengthening the grid to get it, um, you know, to where it is going to be used. So these are considerations that. Um, will have to be made. And as I said at the beginning of the class, much of what I'm saying today, you need to use it as part of um, the, 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 the project um, that you have to do for this module. Reserve margins. We spoke about reserve margins already. In terms of the facilities I have, the renewable facilities, what sort of margin do I need? I told you some, I told you in the first lesson on, on the management that, you know, this 10% rule is the 10% rule now out the window, given that we have so much renewables on the system? Can I survive with 10% or do I need to go where we are now in Jamaica? The 20 odd percent. Because with that 20 odd percent, when I lose an IRE facility because a cloud comes in on the wind. So in one instance, I'm getting the benefit of wind energy because it's nice and windy. But that, that same wind brings in some nice clouds. And so my solar facility goes. So it ha I have to think about my, my margins. I have to think about storage. And storage not only deals with things like, like solar. Do I want to store that energy? And this is where all physics now comes in because I can store that energy by just pumping some water. That is stored energy. So I now have that potential energy which I can then transfer to my hydro, my hydro system. And then finally, we talk about grid support. You just did the lab, yes, in terms of the, the, you know, yeah, we understand that many of the conclusions were not very clear and the discussions were weak, but the bottom line is we understand, I hope we now understand and can appreciate the importance of VAR support. And it's, 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 it's VARs in terms of injecting VARs into the bus. Depending on the technology that I'm going to be using in terms of the RE, I may need to have VAR support, which is what I'm referring to here as grid support. Okay? So we want to do is quickly look at, look at the technologies. We start with wind. And the, the wind system, yeah, as you can see here, the, in, terms of the, in terms of the production of, of, of electrical energy, it's quite similar to your thermal plant. The only difference is that um, where the turbine is for your for your 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 thermal plant, that is then replaced by that. Your gears and your hub. Everything back here is like your, your regular plant. So in that nacelle, which is the housing, what you see at the back of the of the, of the turbine, that big thing at the back, yes? Um, that contains your, your, your generator and your transformer. Yep. Um, up front, you may have some gears or, you know, depending on the technology, um, it, it, it may be done using um, static devices, yeah? um, variable speed drives, okay? So the rotation, is coming from the from the from the from the the, the, the the wind, yes. So the rotation is being produced by the by the wind. 
um, across the blades of the turbine. And nothing fancy about that. But you know, you are you have the, the, the wind in terms of the wind speed can vary. And so you have different technologies that are used. Yes. If you have a fixed speed wind turbine, yeah, where, where it is coupled and you're getting a fixed speed regardless of what is happening out there, then the technology in integrating it, because remember we spoke earlier about the need for synchronization, yes? For it to be synced with the network, then you have to find a way how do I connect it? Oh, we, we'll talk about that uh, in, a, in, a, in a few. But you have variable wind um, speed generators. You have generators that are going to be using, I mean, turbines that are, wind turbines that are going to be using synchronous machines or induction machines. If it's induction, then where is the, 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 the VAR support coming from? Because it would require VARs to operate that induction um, generator. So these are considerations that will have to be made when we're talking about integration. I know I'm giving you a lot of stuff here this afternoon, but you know, um, this is what now makes modern power systems um, interesting because it is not just about you know a, a, a thermal plant with with, with 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 turbines and all of that. Um, we are now talking about a lot of power electronics. So if you are if you are more leaning towards that type of thing, you still have a place um, in, 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 in the power field because this is where um, we're going. Um, so we have the gears, as I mentioned, the variable speed drives, because this would now help us to get that output, which would allow us to um, be synchronized to the system. Of course, I'm, I'm oversimplifying a lot of what we have here because in terms of the, the wind systems, those are coupled and they are brought to a, a substation on the facility and then from that substation into, into the electrical grid. All right. Um, yeah. Now, we can't dispatch wind. And, and I'm saying that almost tongue in cheek because this is one of the areas that, uh, that I've given you know, a little more focus than, than, than others. And whilst we can't dispatch wind, in terms of the, the, the ability to forecast, that has been improved over, over time. And so we are able to give a better understanding or a better guesstimate as, as to what the output from our wind systems will be, um, you know, within a particular um, time. And the other thing I want to mention, and, and it may come as a, you know, many times you will, you, you will be um, driving along and you're not really feeling any wind, but yet you see the turbines, um, the windmills are, are spinning, yeah? Usually, the upper level wind is a little heavier than what you'll get at um, ground level, right? Um, but the, the point is, whilst it's intermittent, it will not move suddenly to zero. So in terms of storage, that may not be so critical because whilst you, you will get a gradual decline of, of the wind output, yes? It will allow you, in, and I say you, I'm talking about as a utility, it will allow you a little time to make the necessary adjustment, right? Where you can now start uh, bringing in um, generation that can come online. You know, the fast acting generation that we mentioned before, you can now start bringing in those. And it could also be renewables because it could be hydro, depending on the type of hydro you have. Because hydro, although it is renewable, depending on how it operates, it can be dispatchable. So you can turn it on and off. So the point about wind here is that, unlike solar, you can um, you have time to make adjustments. Okay. Um, in terms of the interface, as I mentioned before, um, this will be dependent on the technology used in the turbine. So we do have some old turbines um, here in Jamaica, such as Bricton One. Uh, those are induction type
generators. Yep. Those came in in the early 2000s. So in terms of technology, they, they are kind of out. Uh, the newer ones, um, I don't want to quote me on this, but I think many of the newer ones are um, synchronous machines. So in terms of the VAR support that they are taking from the network, it wouldn't be as great. All right, so to operate um, the, the weak down ones, they would have had to put in capacitors in their facility in order to operate those turbines. And whereas the others would not require that sort of um, uh, demand. So to support the different te technologies, um, the options that you will have, would be for like soft starters, use of fixed speed turbines, uh, for your synchronous generators, which will operate at, at um, synchronous speed. Um, synchronous speed, of course, would, would then dictate what the system frequency um, would, would be equal to. Okay. And um, soft starters use, you know, thyristors and I suppose by now you realize I'm not a fan of power electronics, but I have to do it because I'm in this field. But you know, you 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 tire stuff um, to produce you know appropriate um, frequency in terms of the interconnection. Um, I also mentioned that you would need VAR support. All right, so you use VAR support for your induction that meet um, generators. I mentioned that, and then lastly. Yeah, I know we're running out of time, so I know I'm going a little fast now. The, you're going to put a wind farm where you have good wind regime. There's no point in putting on a wind farm and then hope and pray that it gets windy. So you'll have all of these tests that would have been conducted to determine where you can put on the wind farm, right? But that's only half the battle. The, um, it, it may be that where you have wind, is not necessarily where you will have um, the, 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 the appropriate grid connection point. And so it would require significant um, investment in strengthening the grid at these points in order to get it into the network. All right. So whilst um, what, what are, and I don't know if you heard the reports coming out of the last annual general meeting of um, week 10 where they said we're going into farming now this is this is something that may seem far-fetched but the reality is wind farms require require large footprints um and by that i mean you need large expanse right to put on a wind farm because you do and, and one of the reasons is that you know, once the wind passes over the blade, you're, you're then talking about the wake of, 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 the, of the blade. So um, just like an aircraft, you know, you'd have a sort of vacuum being formed behind um, the, the, the aircraft. So you, you have that being formed behind the wind. So you need to space them. The fact that you're spacing them means that you have a whole heap of land. And so it provides facility for farming. So weak done is not far off on that. But at the same time, because you are now in that sort of era, you may not necessarily be close to the point on the grid where the power being supplied from your plant can be effectively or efficiently utilized. All right. All right. And um, so let me just wrap the other two. For hydro, we know that hydro is formed or are produced when, you know, the rotation and input, we have water flowing across the blades of a turbine, and this drives a generator. So the technology in of itself is quite similar to what you would have had with the thermal. It's just that the thermal, as we now know, is produced from heat. Yes. So your high generation is just the water moving the, the turbine blades, and then the turbine drives your generator. Right? Nothing fancy about that. Um, and so your, your turbine. Want to go do this? So your turbine, here's your water, right? And the water drives your turbine, and then the turbine is coupled to your generator, and the generator then goes to your network. 
Okay. Now, based on the considerations I gave earlier in terms of protection, etc., because your hydro plant is part of is usually part of the bigger network. Um, some of the protection considerations would have been dovetailed into all of that. So in terms of having a separate or specific disconnection um, um, systems, that may not be necessary because the hydro plant would be part of the bigger network. All right? I hope you understand that. In terms of technologies, you have a run of the river. I also have water storage facility. And I'm talking about your reservoirs, you know, dams. And um, I, I just want to make it clear that run of the river may have storage facilities, but these storage facilities are just to ensure that they have continuity of supply. So you're not you're not having a big um, um, holding area for water. It's just that you have it so that you're you're, you're managing the flow, all right? So it's still run of the river, but you're just managing the flow in terms of in terms of the water coming in. For the water storage, you have reservoirs um, and your dams, which means that you can dispatch, you can actually dispatch um, hydro plants. The hydro plants are dispatchable, uh, especially those with storage facilities. Okay. Now, you can have the storage facilities where the water stored is coming from rivers, all right? But the primary operation is that you're using a storage facility. I hope you understand that. And the water from the storage facilities can be returned by pumping. So after it is used to drive the generation, to produce that electricity, we then pump it back into, into the storage facility. All right, and as I said, I may have said it at the beginning of um, management that we have pump storage, okay, and um, that hydro is one of those generation that can quickly come online. Now, this may not necessarily be for your run of the river, but for your pump storage, you know, for we having storage facilities then you, you would be able to bring these online to deal with any form of shortfall you have in your network. All right? And yeah. And then finally, finally, we have solar systems. And the two that we can focus on are your concentrated solar plant, your CSPs, or your photovoltaic. Mainly in Jamaica, we are, we, well, in Jamaica, we use photovoltaic. In places like California and some of these areas, you, you may find CSPs, which is basically um, for your CSPs, um, <clears throat> they operate just like your, 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 your thermal systems. So you're using the sun to boil water. So the sun now provides the, the, the heat uh, towards the generation of electricity. Okay? And then for your photovoltaic, For your photovoltaic, at the heart of it is your inverter. And that inverter provides the interconnection with your, with your, your, your power system or your grid. Yes? Um, and one of the benefits of this is that because it's static interconnection, you can use it both with your 50 or 60 hertz. So if I buy a, an inverter, um, in the US. I can use it in Jamaica at 50. I just have to go in and make the necessary settings um, in that inverter. Um, and then, you know, if I, well, I mean, if I decide to move to, to Cuba or move to um, Antigua or St. Kitts, I can take it with me and go use it there and, and their six tier systems. Yes? So it allows you to use different frequencies because of the type of interface. And then the last thing for today, um, 
you require, if you are going to be interfacing in selling power to the grid, you require to have special protection to avoid islanding. And um, storage is a critical component of solar systems. In the past, uh, Jamaica, we allowed um, solar systems to come in or to be installed that did not have storage, but that has been, uh, that, that, that is now a thing of the past, all right? Um, where persons now, or institutions who, who, in, who are interested in um, supplying solar to our grid are required to, will be required to, to, to put up storage facilities. All right, so I know this has been a mouthful, but it will, as I said, help you. I'll provide some direction, I hope, for your project. Um, it is now five o'clock. I thank you for your patience. I know I rushed a bit at the end, but I trust it was worth it. Um, so we're next, we're next we meet, we look at, um, at, at substation fundamentals and talk about, um, you know, some, yeah, 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 some stuff regarding substation. All right. Okay, that's it from me for today. Um, any questions, any comments, and then we, um, we, can, we can move on. All right, that's it. Sir, I have a question. Good evening. Yes, Miss Michael, go ahead. You're um, loaded. Um, Raise your voice a bit. Hearing? Go ahead. Um, for the CSP, the solar one, um, you said oh. that you used to boil the water, so it would then be classified as a steam um, turbine? Or yes. a steam okay. Yeah. So in, in, in terms of a thermal system, your regular thermal system where you'll be boiling water to produce steam, etc. yes? The, 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 the CSP is used for that. Oh, okay. And one of the beautiful things about it is that the, the, it can provide its own storage in terms of um, it heating uh, things like brine, brine or salt. Um, so you'll have that, that heat energy um, maintained in those facilities. So you can still get the benefit of the CSP without sunlight. Okay, sir. So, and this would, you would need a wide land space or a, a wide area? Huge, 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 huge facilities. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, have a good afternoon and uh, rest thank of the afternoon. Thank you, Christian. Good evening. Hmm? Yeah, go ahead. As it relates for the orals tomorrow, so do we need to have the the power systems or power power program on screen, sir? Oh yes, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Yes, you will have you will need to have whatever facility you use to um to to conduct the labs. Um you will need to be able you, you will be allowed to or you'll be required to share your screen. All right, so from, you know, depending on what I'm doing at the time, um, you'll share your screen. And persons will join the class at the time I give in the, in the, um, in the schedule, all right? So you don't need to wait on me, you just join at that time, because I'll be ready for you at that time. But thanks for that question. You need your computer um, and be ready to share your screen. All right, sir. Thanks, man. All right. All right. Take care.